you describe for us your best sighting? The best sighting was an all black one and he was quite large and if he definitely showed the thylacine characteristics, the, the rear tight rear end, the long tail and the, the, the quite um, large head and he'd come out of the bush in, pretty well in front of us, probably 20 metres in front of us, leapt onto the road, looked and leapt off the road again, as simple as that and he was, he was a beautiful animal, very sleek, shiny, healthy, but he was quite large and that was the largest one I've ever seen and he, he certainly matched those prints, we've, plaster cast prints we have got. He would be the closest animal I've seen that come near those prints. So, but a lot of the tracks we find are a smaller variety, mainly blue healer size, um, around that size. Could you estimate how big this animal must have been? Could you compare it to, say, a breed of dog or...? I'd say he was right up there with a Great Dane. Um, <laughs> That night is going to be unforgettable for me. I have never experienced anything like that ever. This uh, being just appeared and I cannot say it was human. It had a, a form of a witch and it followed me. And until this day, I, 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 I think back on that and I am still scared. What, what, how did you feel? Well, I was frightened. Uh, I was really frightened. I, this is something that I've never experienced before in my life. Uh, with this uh, creature appeared, my my only reaction was to go to put the car in reverse and, and go. And understandably, this creature terrified you so much that you actually fainted. Although I don't remember fainting, I remember the creature being stuck on the windshield and the creature tried to stand, uh, stick her, the hand inside the car or something like that. And so what, my reaction was to cover my, my face with my hands and try to go, go back on the car. But since I had the seatbelt on, uh, I just remember an impact and uh, I was wearing my, uh, my vest, my bulletproof vest. And when I woke up, the vest was gone and I was just crying. Uh, I was crying and the commander was hugging me. Afterwards, uh, after I explained the situation, they took me to a psychologist to get exams made, done, and I uh, found out that I had, there was nothing wrong with me. But uh, the, the, the lapse of time between that impact and from the time that I actually came to uh, the realization what, that I was crying with the commander, I do not know what happened that whole lapse of time. Looks like a man, looks like an ape, but smells like a skunk. It's another creature, it's a hominid, it's evolved right along with us, it's a biological creature. No, I, I've never seen anything like it before. Uh, I've seen near seeing anything to it would be a bear, but bears, you know, they're on all four. When they move any distance, they go down to four. But if I know what I know now, I would have run after and got closer shots or, you know, but. Uh, at that time, I just snapped one shot, and a lot of people think that's odd. Uh, I said, well, that just shows you at the time, I just didn't think nothing true about it. And one of the boys said, Bigfoot, Bigfoot. And he was looking over this way, in these trees over here. And it was about, just about here, uh, we saw a creature standing on the edge of the bush there, and uh, it took us by a complete surprise. It looked like a huge gorilla. The 97 uh, sightings that happened down in Ochapi, Florida, were legitimate sightings as far as the BFRO has conceded. Those, the, the witnesses saw something, and from the measurements and the data that was collected from that investigation, it was determined that it was definitely a skunk ape Bigfoot. It was either one creature moving back and forth, or it was a family of creatures. 
because it's our understanding from history and reports that I've read analysis that these creatures actually move in a family group, contrary to 30 years ago when they were believed to be isolated individual creatures. Mothman is probably related to the Thunderbird legend because it has some of the same diagnostic features such as large wings, uh, a frightening ability about it. The Thunderbird legend really goes back 350 years. Native Americans, uh, of course, are most identified with the Thunderbird legend where there are large birds, usually condor-like birds, birds that have enormous wingspans of over 20 feet. Uh, that they fly in circle areas, that they pick up livestock. Among the native peoples, they talk oftentimes about them stealing their children or harassing their villages. And so they get into ritualistic ways of trying to appreciate and acknowledge that these masters of the sky need to be approached and actually dealt with. And so uh, native peoples, more than uh, the Caucasian population, knows that there's some reality there. As far as thought forms, spirit world, that really relates to how people take on the experience. For native peoples, there are many, there's 400 different tribal groups in the United States. Among some people, they take the Thunderbird on as a flesh and blood creature. Some other groups, actually, some of the First Nations feel that these are spirit forms. So it's, as many different opinions come from the First Nation people, as you'll find in any crowd of people talking about the Mothman. It said there are stranger things in heaven and earth than we can think of. You've just seen some of them on Animal X.